Hey, it's Andrew here. Welcome back to the channel where we talk about social security changes, the next two stimulus packages, and daily news updates as well. Now, Mitch McConnell has agreed to a stimulus bill, so let's discuss the details and exactly how President Biden responded and what this means for the next two stimulus packages as well as social security benefit increases. But before we get into it, don't forget to like this video and subscribe. I also have a second channel, so if you could do me a huge favor click on the link that's in the description of this video go ahead and subscribe to my second channel i'm going to be giving away a stimulus check on that channel just as a thank you for supporting my work now at this point most of you know that this first infrastructure stimulus bill will not have that much as far as direct stimulus but the negotiations on this first stimulus will affect the second stimulus package, the American Families Plan, which is expected to have a lot of direct payments. So it's important to see how this first stimulus package will develop because it will affect the amount of stimulus that can be approved in the second stimulus package. Now, Mitch McConnell recently held an interview where he responded to President Biden's plan, agreed to a smaller deal, and then talked about why he doesn't like Biden's plan and something he'd be willing to compromise on in order to get a deal done. So let's take a look, see what Mitch McConnell had to say then we'll discuss the details of exactly what Mitch McConnell has agreed to, President Biden's response to that, and what this means for the next two stimulus package, and what it could also mean for Social Security changes as well. Remember, President Biden promised to increase Social Security benefits, and this current stimulus package is going to affect the budget, so it could have ripple effects as to what exactly the president is able to do later as far as increasing Social Security benefits. But let's take a look, see what McConnell had to say, and then we'll discuss the details at the end of this video. Capitol on your program earlier today, she's our leader on the infrastructure bipartisan negotiation. Uh, out of her committee uh, came a traditional infrastructure package just this week. We also are engaged with the administration trying to reach an agreement. Part of the problem, as you suggest, is what is the definition of infrastructure? Uh, we pretty much understand it's roads, bridges, ports. Inf uh, broadband, uh, traditional infrastructure, the Democrats would like to spend a lot more. Speaking of their spending habits, so far this administration has recommended, recommended we spend seven trillion additional dollars this year. That would be more than we spent in adjusted inflation dollars to win World War II. So they have huge uh, spending desire and as your uh, introduction suggested, a great desire to add in $3.6 trillion in additional taxes on top of it. So the question for some uh, this morning is how much new spending is involved in this proposal? Uh, Senator Toomey suggested earlier this morning that there's enough unspent funds in COVID relief that could be directed toward this. Do we have a new spending number? Well, look, uh, Senator Toomey's point is well made, but let me quote Larry Summers, who was Bill Clinton's Secretary of the Treasury and Barack Obama's uh, head of the Council of Economic Advisors. He said at the beginning of the year that the previous package, the, the so-called rescue package, would create a wave of inflation. And only this week he reiterated that happened, just as he predicted, but it also included this extra bonus on top of state unemployment insurance that's keeping people from going back to work. So that's what they've already done, and now they seem to want to double down and do more. What we'd like to see done is a bipartisan agreement on traditional infrastructure, and much of it could be paid for by this additional money that's already been sent down to states and localities, many of which are in great shape financially and have just received an incredible bonus of borrowed money from us. Uh, Senator, you know, you can't blame Americans who might even be listening to you right now and want infrastructure of some kind to, to, to be passed uh, for being somewhat cynical on the possibility of it. I mean, in your long career as both majority and minority leader under both Democratic and Republican administrations, tell me, when was the last time that there was a major, an important piece of legislation passed in a bipartisan manner uh, by Congress? Yeah, uh, we're going to do one this week. Uh, the Endless Frontiers Act, uh, the lead on our side is Senator 
Todd Young from Indiana. Okay, so a lot to unpack here. First, I want to point out the fact that Mitch McConnell was slamming the previous stimulus package, which included a $300 per week unemployment boost until the end of September. And now some economists are saying that it's keeping people from going back to work. Of course, about 24 states are cutting that off early and hoping that will lead to people going back to work. On the other hand, people who are getting the boost are saying they don't want to go back to work yet because the pandemic is still raging. But guys, let me know your thughts on that in the comments below. Mitch McConnell also mentioned that he wants to use those savings from not paying the unemployment boost and repurpose that into the infrastructure bill and using the majority of that to get this infrastructure bill done. Now, in my opinion, if we're saving that money, why not use that money for the monthly social security boost, right? Because President Biden promised a $200 per month boost for everybody on social security benefits. And that money could basically fund almost the entire thing. It would cost between $150 and $250 billion. And simply by using this money from the unemployment boost, they could basically pay for all of that. Now, what exactly has Mitch McConnell agreed to? Well, President Biden lowered his overall budget for the infrastructure stimulus to $1.7 trillion. Then Mitch McConnell agreed to do a basically $1 trillion infrastructure bill, but about two-thirds of that would just be repurposed from the previous stimulus package, so really not actually spending that much more money. Now, the main things that McConnell wants to take out of this package are two things, and honestly, it's the two things that benefit seniors the most. First is funding for more affordable housing, improving affordable housing that already exists, as well as building more affordable housing and providing more funding to help people pay their rent. That would help a lot of people who are on Social Security. He also wants to cut the funding that is for senior care and care for the disabled. There are seniors who have been on wait lists for six months to a year trying to get the health care they need via home health care or a retirement home. And they simply can't get it because there's not enough funding. Now, Biden wants to consider this infrastructure. Mitch McConnell wants to take this out. So the deal that Mitch McConnell agreed to does not include funding for senior care and does not include funding for affordable housing. But they mostly agree on everything else for the most part. He also wants to take out research and developments for electric vehicles. But everything as far as roads, public transit, water infrastructure, broadband, airports, rails, things that we consider traditional physical infrastructure, they are for the most part agreed upon. That is not the issue at this point. The issue are the other things that we mentioned, as well as how exactly they're going to pay for it, right? Because President Biden wants to raise taxes on rich individuals, as well as raise taxes on corporations. Now, Mitch McConnell does not want to do either of those. Those tax cuts that Trump created in 2017, they will not budge on any of those. And now Biden is trying to create a compromise. And he said, okay, we won't change anything from Trump's tax cuts, but we're going to create a minimum corporate tax of 15%. So all those reports of companies like Amazon and Bank of America paying 0% in federal income tax would go out the window and they would be forced to pay a minimum of 15% in federal income tax no matter how many tax deductions they have. This would create hundreds of billions of dollars in more tax revenue and yes, that money could be used to approve more stimulus. They could use that money for more stimulus checks. They could use that money for that $200 per month stimulus boost. They could even use that money to increase social security benefits. Now, it's still unclear as to whether or not McConnell would go for this, but some top Republican officials have said they would be willing to do this. And it is a compromise from Biden's end. Again, Biden originally started at $2.3 trillion. He came down to $1.7 and now he's even willing to only increase the minimum corporate tax, not increasing taxes on individuals, and not increasing the maximum corporate tax rate. Right now, the maximum corporate tax rate is 21%. Biden originally proposed raising that back to 28%, but he's willing to throw that out the window and just create this minimum corporate tax. Now, while we're on the topic of taxes, let's talk about exactly who this would benefit and how this would affect you. Because Republicans are always saying if you raise taxes on corporations, they're simply going to pass on those costs either on the consumer by higher prices or onto the employee by lowering wages. Well, there have been extensive studies that show that when you increase taxes on corporations, 40% of those tax increases 
go to that company. So the owners of the companies or the owners of the stocks actually take a hit. Then 30% of the hit goes to the actual employees in the form of lower wages. And the other 30% go to the consumer in the form of higher prices. So as you can see, raising taxes on corporations, it does hurt corporations, but it also hurts employees and people who are buying these products. Now, most of you watching my channel are on social security benefits. You don't really work. And if you work, you work just part time. So lowering wages wouldn't really directly affect you much, but it would kind of increase your consumption prices by indirectly increasing how much things might cost. But with that said, increasing taxes, the majority of that burden does end up falling on the business owner and the stock shareholders by 40%. So this is why Democrats think it's a good idea to increase revenue and could potentially lead to more stimulus. Now, in order to create more funding for Social Security and more funding for stimulus, Biden actually wants to create more funding for the IRS, allowing them to audit the wealthy who are not paying their fair share. Now, it's believed that by investing $80 billion into the IRS to allow them to further audit wealthy individuals, that this would result in $700 billion over the next 10 years in money that is not being collected that should be because the IRS simply does not have enough funding to audit all of these rich people. So if that kind of makes sense, putting $80 billion into the IRS would probably result in $700 billion, which again could be used for Social Security. It could be used for more stimulus. And it would help eliminate the excuse as to whether or not we can actually afford these things, right? So guys, these are all really good ideas that could lead to more stimulus. And with that said, Mitch McConnell has offered the $1 trillion deal and agreed to this deal. Now, Biden has countered with a $1.7 trillion deal, but is taking away the tax increases and only doing this minimum tax for corporations. Now we'll have to see how Mitch McConnell responds. Will he agree to this deal? And does it even matter? Because a lot of people are saying, you know what, forget Republicans. Let's do this through budget reconciliation. Now, let me give you my thoughts on that. First of all, yes, the Senate parliamentarian has said that Democrats can do two more budget reconciliation bills, which would lead to two more stimulus packages. However, if Democrats can get this first one done through budget reconciliation, they would still have two more budget reconciliation bills left, meaning they could completely use those last two bills for stimulus in the form of direct stimulus payments instead of having to waste one on the infrastructure bill if that kind of makes sense. So actually coming to a bipartisan deal on infrastructure could actually lead to Democrats having the power to pass two more stimulus packages that do include direct payments. So in my opinion, I personally think it's in your best interest if Democrats come to a bipartisan deal on infrastructure, get this done without budget reconciliation, and then save those last two for direct stimulus payments. But guys, let me know your thoughts on that in the comments below. There should be a lot of updates in the next two weeks as Biden has given Republicans a one-week deadline. June 7th, he said, if Democrats don't seem to be closing in on a deal with Republicans, he most likely will move on to budget reconciliation, at which point we'll have to see if he's able to convince Democrats like Joe Manchin and Kristen Sinema to do this without Republicans. So with that said, guys, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to to subscribe. I will keep you updated on the next two stimulus packages, social security changes, and daily news updates as well. And until the next video, take care and have a great day.